There are some things I'm just glad to get working. I don't need to understand how they work. And DKIM is one of those things. Let's talk about that. Brought to you by MySites.Guru. Do you have a Joomla site? Of course you do. Head on over to MySites.Guru and get a free site audit for it. Hey there, Joomla fans. Tim Davis here. I'm a Joomla fan too. Thanks for tuning in to Maintenance Monday number 287 here in the Basic Joomla Tutorials YouTube channel where I show you my favorite extensions, tools, and tips for building and maintaining Joomla sites. I also work on Joomla sites, build them, maintain them, migrate them to Joomla 4. If you're looking to hire someone short-term or long-term or even just to get you out of a spot, send me an email, tim at cybersalt.com and let's talk. Okay, and a word about today's video. DKIM is a tool for helping your emails get delivered and to be accepted by other web hosting companies. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up DKIM on a web hosting account that you have with a company. If you're looking for information on how to set it up on your own private servers, uh, I am not the droid you're looking for because I don't fully understand how it works or how to do that. But for the general common man and woman, this is how you can set up DKIM for sending your mail. Let's turn our attention to the screen and we'll look at that right now. Now, what is DKIM? DKIM allows the receiver to check that an email that claimed to have come from a specific domain was indeed authorized by the owner of that domain. It achieves this by affixing a digital signature linked to a domain name to each outgoing message. The recipient system can verify this by looking up the sender's public key published in the DNS. A valid signature also guarantees that some parts of the email, possibly including attachments, have not been modified since the signature was affixed. So this is a powerful tool to make our emails more deliverable to the companies that are out there that are receiving emails. And as I said, let's take a look at how to set it up on simple web hosting accounts. Now, let's go over to easydmark.com to their DKIM lookup. And we're going to check for a DKIM record for one of my domains, democorner.com. Now, selector technically is really just the name of different keys that you have for sending mail out from servers or other services that send out mails. But in this case, we're just gonna to look to see if there are any. And so I'm going to check detect all selectors and check DKIM. And as you will see, it's going to come up, no selectors detected. All right, well, let's see what's going on with that. Now in my company, the hosting that I offer to myself and to my clients is cPanel. And if we go into the cPanel account for democorner.com, we can go down to the email area and we can go to email deliverability. When we click on that, it's going to test all the domains and subdomains to see if there's any issues with their setup that would prevent them from being delivered if mail is sent to those domains. And you'll see right down here that there is a problem that exists with democorner.com. So let's go and see. We're going to click on manage and we will see here that the problem that exists is that there's no DKIM record. That's because I deleted it before making this video. Now, the great thing about cPanel is that we can install that DKIM record right on the server using this tool by clicking install a suggested record. But first I want to, let's just go here. I'm gonna copy the name and I'm gonna copy the value because I want you to also to see how you can manually put in this information in the zones for your domain if you don't have this tool in your cPanel or the web hosting uh, control panel or system, whatever that your host offers. But first of all, let's just use the tool that's right here. Install the suggested record. I'm going to click that and it gives me this war little warning. Hey, you uh, if you send mail from another server, you have to use this DKIM on the remote server. Sure. Install that record. It says it's installed. Now, if we go back to our DKIM checker, let's check again, check DKIM. And there you go, we've got one. Excellent. Now we go back to cPanel. Everything's hunky-dory here. Now I wanted to show you how to add this without that tool. To do that, let's go back to cPanel. Let's go down to the domains area. And what you want to do in your web hosting, whatever tools your company that you're hosting with offers, find the zone editor. And here it is. Now you're going to see here's democorner.com and I'm just going to click on manage and now we'll see all the zone records for democorner.com. Now I have a ton of subdomains on this domain 
So what I'm going to do is filter for text records. That'll cut it down. And now uh, I'm going to skip down to the end because since that was the most recent record added, it's probably going to be at the end. And here it is, default domain key dot demo corner dot com. Now let's just delete that zone. And now let's add it the manual way. Here we're going to go add a record and we're going to add a text record. The valid zone name, the name, we've already copied it, is default.domainkey.democorner.com. The type is text. As a text record, it has to have the same time to live as all of the other text records. And now we're just going to paste in the DKIM key there, save the record, and once again, down at the bottom, we've manually added that record. And that's what you can do for your hosting. Now, let me show you a more complex setup for DKIM because you need to have a DKIM record for every service that is sending out mail on behalf of your domain. And that's the case with my other domain, cybersalt.com. So we go to the DKIM checker, cybersalt.com, and we're going to detect all selectors and check the DKIM. And what it is going to find is that there are two DKIM records for my cybersalt.com domain. There is this one, the selector is Google. It's really just the key name is Google. It's not because it's a site, it could be anything. And there's also default. And we just set up a default one for democorner.com. Now these are the two DKIM records. Now the name servers I am using for cybersalt.com are not the ones that point to my web hosting account where my website is they are actually pointing to Cloudflare because I like to run my DNS through Cloudflare because it gives a faster time to first byte for my pages being served up than if I have my DNS running through just the one server that my hosting account is on. So here we are in Cloudflare looking at the account for cybersalt.com. I'm going to go down to DNS and here are my zones. Now let's search for DKIM on this page to find those two DKIM records. Here they are, right here. Default domain key and google.domain key. Now these domain keys are different because when I send out mail through the mail server that comes with my web hosting account, it adds this key to the emails. That mail server only sends out mail. But the mail server that processes incoming mail for cybersalt.com and can also send out, I have with Google, Google Workspace or Google Suite, whatever they're calling it these days. And when that server sends out mail, it uses this key. They're two different keys. So whatever service you or services you're using that sends out mail, you need to have DKIM set up for each one. So the question is now, well, where do you get these records? Well, for the one on my hosting, I get it here. Here we are in the cybersalt.com web hosting control panel. I'm going to go down to email, which is here. I'm going to go to email deliverability and I'm going to cybersalt.com. You'll see it's all valid. And when I go into manage, this is where I got the key right here. I use this key and this name, and then I added it to Cloudflare. Now, where did I get the one for Google Workspace? Well, I went to Google Workspace, Gmail, to the DKIM authentication, and they gave me the key right here. And I can show you this key because it's a public key. So here's the text record name, Google domain key, and the text record. And that's what I did to add it to the record here on Cloudflare. Now, how do you add a record to Cloudflare? Well, let me show you, and we can do it by setting up a DKIM for a subdomain. Check this out. Here we are. Let's click back here. Email deliverability. Look, I have a subdomain here hosting that cybersalt.com, but there's a problem with the DKIM and the SPF. Let's go to manage, and we'll see right here. Later on, I can fix the SPF. That was another video. But here, DKIM, it says, hey, look at this here. Your DKIM's not configured properly. And look, it also says that this system, this hosting control panel, does not control the DNS for hosting.cybersalt.com. No, it doesn't, because that is managed by Cloudflare. So it says, I have to put this 
on the system that controls the DNS. So I'm going to copy the name. Oh, I just click here. I'm going to copy the value. Now I'm going to go back to Cloudflare. I'm going to add a record. I'm going to add a text record. And then I'm going to add the name, which I just copied there. And I'm going to add the contents of what goes into that record. And I'm going to go save. And now when I go back to the email deliverability test and refresh, we'll see there's only going to be a problem with SPF, which again, like I said, I'll fix later. But now DKIM is working because the system that is managing the DNS records for cybersalt.com now has a DKIM record so that if mail goes out from hosting.cybersalt.com, say Tim at hosting.cybersalt.com, it will attach this key. So now we can go to the DKIM record checker for hosting.cybersalt.com. We'll detect all selectors. We'll check DKIM. And there's the record that we just added. So I don't know how it works, but I know how to make it work. You make it work too, and your email will be more deliverable. Subscribe for more videos. Until the next time, enjoy your Joomla sites, and God bless.